Thank you, Melinda, and the ensemble, and the band. So if it's true, and we just heard it's true, <laughs> right? Obviously, it's true. We just sang it. If it's true, love is the answer, what is the question? <laughs> How do you live life? Love is the answer. Love is the answer. Love is the only answer to any question that we really ask. Any question that we ask, any situation that we stand in, any circumstance that we find ourselves in, love is the only answer. It's the only answer. And because we're in Valentine's weekend, I had to look up at the internet what love means. So, and I went to my favorite source, the children. So what does love mean? These are answers from 48-year-old kids. Billy, age four, says, when someone loves you, the way they say your name is different. You just know that your name is safe in their mouth. Ooh, doesn't that feel yummy? <laughs> Terry, age four, she says, love is, make you sm is what makes you smile when you're tired. If you want to learn love better, you should start with a friend who you hate. <laughs> Nika, age six. We need a few million more Nikas on the planet, don't we? Love is like a little old woman and a little old man who are still friends even after they know each other so well. <laughs> when you love somebody, your eyelashes go up and down. <laughs> and little stars come out of your eyes. Ooh. That's Karen, age seven. And Jessica, age eight, she says, you really shouldn't say I love you unless you mean it. But if you mean it, you should say it a lot. People forget. And my favorite came from uh, Leo Biscaglia, who once talked about a contest he was asked to judge, and the purpose of the contest was to find the most caring child. And the winner was a four-year-old child whose next-door neighbor was an elderly gentleman who had recently lost his wife. And upon seeing the man sitting on his porch crying, the little boy went into his yard, climbed onto his lap, and just sat there. And when his mom asked what he had said to the neighbor, the little boy said, nothing. I just helped him cry. Love is. Love is the very fabric of the universe. Love is the essence of all that we are. We get confused because, especially around Valentine's Day, many of us, we get confused because we think it's about something out here. We think it's about something that another person can do to us or for us or about us. We think that it's different. We think that it's humanized. We think, well, we think, and then we get in trouble. <laughs> Right? But what if love is, you know, in 1 John it says, if you know God, you know love because God is love and love is God. And if you don't know love and you don't know God, you don't know. And so what if love, like what if we took the word and like changed what we thought it meant? Like just changed what we thought we meant. Whatever we think it means, whatever our experience about love is, that I have it, that I don't have it, that I give it, that I withhold it, whatever we think that is, what if you just laid that down? Put it in the prayer chest. Lay it down and come into a greater awareness of something that has no name. Something that is so big and so vast and so permeating that it is the universe. That it is the essence of the universe. For if God is love and God created all things, then we must be love. And if we be love, 
then nothing else matters. If we be love, like not think that we want to be love, like not think about how can I show up loving in this, in this moment, although that's not a bad thing. I highly recommend it. It's really helpful. But if we become, if we open ourselves to experience, like the very breath we breathe, the very, the thing that makes our blood flow and the things that make our muscles work and the things that keep our organs operating, that thing that is nameless but not songless, that thing that is nameless is, and if we made that into love, if we decided that we don't know anything about love but just a little glimmer and just knew that everything we knew about it was only just the beginning. In, um, in the Gospels, the Sadducees and Pharisees were gathered around Jesus and um, when they heard how he had when the Pharisees heard how he, Jesus had bested the Sadducees, now these are the, um, the religious people, right? So they're the ones who follow the letter of the law. And um, they gathered around. And one of their religious scholars spoke for them, posing a question they hoped would show him up. They said to Jesus, Teacher, which command in God's love is the most important? I'm reading from the Message Bible, so it's phrased a little different. And Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence. This is the most important, the first on any list. But there is a second to set alongside it. Love others as well as you love yourself. These two commands are pegs. Everything in God's law and prophets hangs from them. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your might, all your strength, with your passion, your prayer, and your intelligence. And then love others as well as you love yourself. Now, we get a little hooked up on that because many of us don't love ourselves very well yet. But love others. And then the final commandment, Jesus said, and love each other as I have loved you. Love. This is the most important thing. Of course, the miracle said that there's only fear and love. There's only two emotions. And if you play with that a little bit, it's easy to think it. And you go, yeah, yeah, I know that. I heard that 25, 30 years ago. But if you begin to apply it into your life, if you begin to really take love on as a spiritual practice, what you can discover is when you are love, when you are in love, and I don't mean in love like, oh, I'm so in love, and I am, but when you are in love, all things work together for good. When you are in love, there is a flow to the universe. If you are not in love, Course in Miracles calls it fear. Fear shows up as anxiety, as worry, as guilt, as shame, as blame, as being right, the need to be right, as judgment. Fear shows up in contraction or resistance. And so when you notice that fear shows up, and it does pretty much every day for most of us at some level, you know, if you drive on the highways, there you go, right? But fear shows up, but if you are taking love as a spiritual practice and you can go, oh, wait a minute. Oh, look, I'm tense. I'm contracted. I'm restricted. What if I brought love to this moment? What if I simply brought love to this moment? And what that can be is simply as take a breath. Take a breath. What if I bring God to this moment? What if I bring love to this moment? And when you bring love then you can breathe. When you bring love, then you can move into a spaciousness. I have a clip. It's a short clip, two and a half minute clip. Robert, if you can get that ready for us. It's actually Martin Luther King. You know, we had Martin Luther King last month, but this is Black History Month and we're about love and I just thought it was perfect. So uh, when you're ready, uh, click it away, please.
Thank you, Robert. Those words spoken in a time that in some ways is so long ago and in some ways was, you know, just a minute ago. Those words that could have been spoken this morning in the world that we stand. But what if we were the ones? What if we the ones that came to know this power, this creative power, that came to trust this power over and above all things that came to practice this power, this power that we call love. And what if we could choose to love the planet? To love, what if we chose love in the face? Martin Luther King says, there's another clip of the same clip when it's actually his voice, but he said, and I choose this morning, I love you, and I would rather die than hate you. I would rather die than not live in love. What if we brought this attitude, I mean, in a no kidding kind of way, onto our streets, into our communities, and onto the world? You look at what's going on in this world. It's not a lot different in some ways, right? You can look back hundreds of years, thousands of years. And it's like humanity is, it's like we're hardwired to hate almost. We're hardwired almost to live in separation and fear. Well, I think that's an evolutionary process that we are moving beyond. We no longer have to operate out of our hardwire. We get to choose. We get to choose to bring love onto this planet, to bring love that which is greater than anything we can even imagine. We get to choose to call it forth, to call it into our awareness, to choose again and again and again. And what we're not talking about is we're not talking about unconditional love. What? Did she really just say that? Yeah, she did, because I I like to make you think a little bit, okay? Because I don't want you to just go, yeah, 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 I know this. So I'm going to throw something out there that goes, what? I'm not talking about unconditional love, and I'll tell you why. As soon as I say, and when I talk about love, I am like out here, right? You can feel it. You can feel it in the room. And when I go over here and I go, but we're talking unconditional love, well, what do we automatically go into? Some kind of condition, Right? So we're going to drop the unconditional and come into that, which is greater. When you think about a, a, a parent, nobody in here, I'm sure, offering unconditional love to their child, no one in here, I'm sure, again, and it's all about conditions. So we drop that. We drop it for that which is greater. We, we feel how setting up conditions happens when we say unconditional. Okay, enough about that. But when you think about love, go to that bigger place. Go to that more open place. Eckhart Tolle said this. "Um, What could be more futile and more insane than to create inner resistance to what already is? What could be more insane than to oppose life itself, which is now and always now? Surrender to what is. Say yes to life. And see how life suddenly starts working for you rather than against you. Say yes to this present moment. Say yes to love. Love is only found in this present moment. So many of us live our lives in the future or in the past. We live our lives in the future and we experience anxiety. We live our lives in the past and we experience depression. But if we could find a way to come fully present right here and right now, fully present to what is, to what is, no matter what is happening, right? Because it's easier to do that when things are going our way, right? It's harder to do that when things aren't going the way we want them to because, of course, we are the only one in the universe that knows how it should be done correctly. Yes? I know there's a couple of us, right? But if we come totally present, it's almost an oxymoron. It's almost counterintuitive. And we totally accept what is. We come into the practice of allowance. We come into a practice of allowing 
and accepting. And that frees us to land into this present moment. It frees us to come into love. It frees us to give us the space to choose love now. We can't choose love yesterday or tomorrow. Now we can choose love tomorrow, but it'll be today. And we can choose love yesterday, but it's still today. It's right now in this present moment. When we take a breath and we go, wow, this is what's happening, X, Y, and Z. It's raining, it's sun's out, it's cloudy, whatever. There's traffic, I got a diagnosis, I heard news I'm not happy about, whatever. And you can begin to go, wow, I'm having some experience <laughs> about that. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm having some emotion, I'm having some reaction, I'm having some resistance. But you bring it right now into this moment. Like, like the exercise I was playing with um, last week when it was actually raining and, and it got really cold there for a couple of days. And, and it's like, okay, I allow the rain. What? Well, I allow the rain. Well, I allow the rain. And, and it's not like, you know, I get to allow the rain. You know, like I say, okay, God, it's okay. You have my permission. You can let it rain. It's not like that. Well, it could be like that. But it's not like that. But it's like... I'm resistant to the rain. Just for example, I'm really not. I like the rain. But just, I'm resistant to it. I don't want it to rain. I go, my hair's all done so beautiful, and it actually worked today, and now I'm going to get wet, and I this, and I nah, you know, what we do. And, and then I go, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I'm tight. I'm tense. I'm stressed. I don't, I'm arguing with reality. Remember Byron Katie's work? Loving what is. I'm arguing with reality. She said, that is insane. That is insanity. How many of us have argued with reality this week? You are insane, and so am I. But when you can, when you can just look and go, wow, I'm going to allow the rain, because then what happens is the rain doesn't change, but my body changes, my physiology changes, my body chemistry changes. I can, like, release automatically. I don't have to think about it. Release some of the cortisone and, and, and ignite some of the oxytocin, the good chemicals, the, the endorphins that go, oh, I allow the rain. Oh, it's raining. Okay. And now what am I going to do? And now what am I going to do? And now who am I going to be? And how am I going to stand? And so you pr play with rain because it's fairly impersonal. And then you allow your awareness to practice with the things that are more personal. Those places where you get bumped up against. Those places that you really get irritated and, and resistant to. You know, resistance is um, just really... Uh, insane. Uh, and so many of us live in resistance because it's just what we do. But um, love itself has no obligation, but fear is full of obligation. But the more resistance we have, the more we suffer. The more resistance that we have, the more we suffer. So take a breath, allow the rain. Oh, I allow this to be happening. Oh, Bring love to it. Bring love to this moment. Bring love to this moment. Bring love to the moments in your physical body, in your emotional body, in your mental body. Bring love to this moment right here and right now. When we can let go of some of the over-focused busyness, right? When we can get let go of some of the resistance and some of the reactions that we have in life, then what we can discover is the space to simply lean into our infinite capacity for love because it's also hardwired in us. We just have our wires mixed up. So feel into that. Feel into the possibility that what you take this week is a practice, is a spiritual practice that says, I'm going to lean into my infinite capacity to love. I'm going to choose love over hate. I'm going to choose love over resistance. I'm going to choose love over anxiety or worry or fear. I'm going to choose love over defensiveness or need to be right. I'm going to choose love 
over any outer reaction. I'm going to lean into that which is already within me. We don't have to heal more to find love. We don't have to do more therapy to find more. We don't even have to shift anything else to find love. It's hardwired in us. We just get to switch our wires from fear, from separation to love, to oneness. We get to just simply switch the wires. And when we do that, we will be awakened and we will be surprised by what shows up. And the tiniest things, it could be you notice the bird chirping. It could be you notice the flower starting to poke up. It is spring. It could be that you notice love and the infinite when you're washing dishes or vacuuming the house or in a simple conversation with somebody. It could be in the sound of a child laughing. It could be somebody you notice in the grocery store that brings a smile to your face. It could be any little thing, but we will never see those little things until we're present right here in this moment, until we open ourselves to become present to this moment, until we become present to love that is the essence of all things, to love that is the power of all things, to love that is the very fabric of the universe. Love is kind, it is clear, it is effortless, and it is irresistible. Irresistible. Become irresistible by allowing the love that is spirit, that is within you, to shine out from you. Allow it to be ignited within you. That bubble, that fountain of joy, that fountain of love that is at the core of your being, it's already there. Allow it to be freed. Lift the lid off of it. Free yourself into love and see what happens in your life. See what happens in your world. It's magical. It's rich. It's abundant. And more than that, it is so yummy fun. I choose love because love is the only answer. Together, I choose love because love is the only answer, and that's the truth. God bless you.